to invite the U.S. Ambassador to Kenya to come and make a few remarks, and subsequent to that, invite the Prime Cabinet Secretary, who will eventually invite the President of the Republic of Kenya. Thank you very much. Well, good morning. President Ruto, Prime Cabinet Secretary Mudavadi, heads of state, government ICT officials, private sector leaders, and international organizations. Thank you for inviting me to speak to you this morning. And I am excited to be here for this, I think, very, very important conference. You know, you know this, Africa is a continent full of economic growth potential. And in my view, technology is the key to prosperity as we work together to shape the future of connected Africa. As some of you may know, international diplomacy is a second career for me. I spent most of my professional life in business, including the CEO of two large international companies, eBay and Hewlett Packard. And one of the most important things I learned in my business career is this, every business is a technology business. As your colleagues here in Kenya know, I have been talking about this ever since I arrived as U.S. Ambassador in August of 2022. But the historic truth of this statement became even more real to me on a recent visit to Northwest Kenya, where uh, anthropologists are partnering with Kenya's National Museum to study some of our earliest human ancestors. One of the scientists handed me a chipped stone tool and told me casually, you are holding the oldest known example of human technology. Three million years ago, one of our great, 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 great grandparents figured out how to sharpen tools to prepare food. And this stone, this stone is the birth of technology. First, the good news is I did not drop the stone. Second, the insight. As I held that stone tool, I realized that humans have been in the technology business since the very beginning, and Africa has been home to human innovation from the start. I am confident that Africa will also be home to important technological innovation in the 21st century. Now, when I say every business is a tech business, it is a reminder that technology innovation isn't just about what is flashy, it's about addressing real problems to help real people, like our ancestors did when they first used technology to create that first hand tool. I became the CEO of eBay in 1998, and our company was at the heart of the first internet boom. There was lots of focus back then on flashy technology, and everyone, including me, thought of eBay first as a tech company. But when we really focused on our mission, we found that we were answering questions that most people didn't consider tech questions. How could we help people buy and sell things efficiently? How could we help people pay for those things safely? And how could we help people ship those things quickly? Our success came because we took business questions and turned them into tech questions. That was simple and it was revolutionary. I encourage all of you to consider this approach for your economies. Look at what strengths already exist in your countries and ask how technology can solve challenges in those sectors to make you a leader through innovation. Sometimes innovation looks like artificial intelligence and satellites and e-money. Sometimes, though, it looks much different than we expect. However, innovation always includes three elements, solutions focused, it is specific, and it's sustainable. Being solution-focused is the foundation of shaping the future of a connected Africa. Technology must be purposeful, and I must say that here in Kenya, I have been impressed by the innovation solutions that Kenyans have developed for local problems. Sometimes in partnerships with American companies, but sometimes just from local startups. For example, one of the coolest companies I have visited since arriving in Kenya is a company called Zipline, that operates in Kenya, Rwanda, Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, and Nigeria. Zipline uses drones to deliver life-saving medical products to hard-to-reach areas. The company is based in America, but each African country it enters, it hires and trains a fully local team. This means that it creates a true partnership where engineering and technology solutions 
are driven from the ground up. Zipline saw a problem in medical distribution, and they used technology to create a solution. Innovating with technology also requires being specific. The solutions must matter to real people and make sense in a local context. The success of African economies depends on solving problems that are very specific to the local context. And at first glance, these problems may not always look like technology issues, but they are. Kenya is actually full of success stories of companies applying technology to aquaculture. I like to joke that we should change the name of aquaculture to fish tech so that the industry gets more investment attention. But it's not completely a joke. Today, fisheries rely on cutting-edge technologies like D GPS, data analytics, and artificial intelligence that have the potential to revol revolutionize fishing and make Africa the world leader. And it's not just fishing. In the 21st century, farming is not just farming, it's ag tech. Medicine is not just medicine, it's med tech. Finance is not just finance, it's fintech. And fashion is not just fashion, it's fashion tech. Whatever your country's specific strengths and challenges are, that's where technology can driver, deliver the most impressive results. Finally, using technology to shape the future of a connected Africa must be sustainable. Technology innovation is not a one-time innovation. It requires constant adaptation that we must maintain over time. Many of you know, over the past few years, we've been sharing a presentation called Why Africa, Why Kenya? that focuses on opportunities for U.S. companies to invest on the continent. As everyone knows, by 2050, one in four people on Earth and one in three working age people will live in Africa. That demographic reality presents an immense opportunity, and taking full advantage of that opportunity means training African workforces so the continent leads in both producing and innovating. There are two other reasons that I believe Africa should be on every American CEO's focus list, supply chain diversification and green energy. The war in Ukraine and the COVID-19 pandemic taught us that we all need more diverse supply chains and Africa can be the solution to this global need and technology will be the key to that success. But when companies diversify their supply chains, they also must go someplace where there is renewable energy. And this continent has abundant hydro, solar, wind, and geothermal resources. And many of your countries are on the forefront of this sustainable change. For example, Kenya produces more than 93% of its energy from renewable sources. New technologies like artificial intelligence are super power hungry and Africa is positioned to lead in this important power generation sector in ways that will impact the entire world. These are just some of the keys to shaping the future of a connected Africa. In my two years in Kenya, I've seen amazing examples of innovation in action, and I look forward to hearing about those developments across the continent as Africa takes on more leadership in technology in the coming years. Thank you very much.